Well, happy sunshine, family. We're back on the Lunacy channel. And, oh, well, how about that? It's 11, 11 p.m. on September 14th, 2017. We're just going to jump right into the Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe detention hearing transcript. Now you'll remember that this hearing was held in Knoxville, Tennessee on August 29th, 2017. This is part one. Wow, how slick is that? OBS is working great. In the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville, the United States of America in all capital letters is the plaintiff versus Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe in all capital letters, the defendant. Interesting how plaintiff is spelled with mixed case, you know, just a capital P and then the rest lowercase and same with defendant here. These are proceedings before the Honorable C. Clifford Shirley Jr. August 29th, 2017. 10.47 a.m. to 12.50 p.m. This would probably be a good time to head back over to Firefox. And let's take a look at the Tennessee Defense Lawyers Association homepage. Now under their news, posted on the 28th of March, 2017, so right at the end of March of this year, Public notice for appointment of U.S. Magistrate Judge. The Judicial Conference of the United States has authorized the appointment of a full-time United States Magistrate Judge for the Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville. Hey, that's where this hearing is. This position is created by the upcoming retirement of Magistrate Judge C. Clifford Shirley, Jr., the essential function of courts is to dispense justice. An important component of this function is the creation and maintenance of diversity in the court system. A community's belief that a court dispenses justice is heightened when the court reflects the community's racial, ethnic, and gender diversity. Applications must be submitted only by applicants personally and must be received by the clerk's office by the close of business on March 30th, 2017. So they had two days to get that done if this announcement was their first awareness of the opening. For more information, click here. And when we click here, we just get a PDF that has the entire job posting. And you guys can take a look at that. I'll leave the link down below. Just very, very interesting how the Honorable C. Clifford Shirley Jr. is retiring soon. They had a deadline at the end of March of this year. So we've got April, May, June, July, August. So that's five months. I wonder how long he's going to be on this case. Is he going to see this case all the way through to the end? Is this going to be the last case that he does? I mean, we've seen what some of our prior presidents of the United States have done on the eve of their departure. Signing some unconscionable verbiage into law. It happens so often they call it the lame duck syndrome. So keep that in mind as we read through this transcript that the Honorable C. Clifford Shirley Jr. is retiring. And we're just going to see if we make any other observations that might connect in with us. Appearances for the plaintiff. 
we've got Cynthia F. Davidson, Esquire. We remember her from the grand jury. She provided most of the testimony under the guise of asking questions. And also, Cynthia Davidson, I believe, was in the identity hearing in Washington, D.C. She's going to have some help this time. We've got Anne Marie Spalto. <clears throat> Both of them are with the Assistant United States Attorney. They're with the U.S. Attorney's Office. <clears throat> All right, for the defendant, we've got Francis L. Lloyd. Rebecca M. Lockwood is the court reporter. RPR CRR official court reporter. And we got an index. I don't remember seeing an index in the prior transcripts. We've got the proceedings. Then it looks like Marie Wasilik, <clears throat> if I'm pronouncing that right, Wasilik, Wasilik? I think it's Wasilik. That's what I'm going to go with. So it looks like Marie Wasilik is called up to the stand. Direct examination by Heather, crossed by Cynthia, and a redirect by Heather, and then we have some more proceedings. All right, well, we're getting into it on page three here. All right, in parentheses, call to order of the court. The courtroom deputy says, All rise, all rise. This court is again in session with the Honorable C. Clifford Shirley Jr., United States Magistrate Judge presiding. Please come to order and be seated. We are here for a detention hearing, status conference, and motion hearing in case number 3 colon 17 CR 82. United States of America versus Heather Tucci Giraffe. Here on behalf of the government is Cynthia Davidson and Anne Marie Sfalto. Is the government ready to proceed? Miss Davidson says, yes, Your Honor. You know, all of that made it sound like this was coming from the courtroom deputy. Is the government ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Is who asked this question right here? Is the government ready to proceed? <clears throat> then the response is yes, your honor. So I don't think Ms. Davidson is <clears throat> replying to the courtroom deputy and addressing the deputy as your honor. I, I don't think that's the case. I wonder if, if the court reporter made a mistake already. Either that or this question was asked by the deputy and answered by Ms. Davidson towards the judge. I'm not sure what's going on here. And here on behalf of the defendant is Francis Lloyd Jr. Is the defendant ready to proceed? And this is coming from the court, which I'm guessing is the Honorable C. Clifford Shirley Jr. Mr. Lloyd says the defendant is ready. Present and ready, Your Honor. As to the status of my relationship to the defendant, I believe that at the hearing this past Thursday, Magistrate Judge Guyton left that to be decided by Your Honor. Judge Shirley says, all right, fine. We'll take that up first then. Miss Davidson, good morning. Oh, good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Lloyd, good morning. Well, good morning, Your Honor. Is it Miss Tucci Giraffe? asked Judge Shirley. Have I said it close? I would like to address you as close to proper as I can do. Heather's reply. Without prejudice, yes, my name is Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Tucci Giraffe, okay, thank you. I'll try to get that correct, and I'll apologize in advance if I don't. Good morning to you. Good morning to those in it. In the audience, let me remind those in the audience, this is a public court, and it's a public hearing, and we're glad to have you, and we welcome you to federal court in the Eastern District of Tennessee. There's a couple rules 
that all of you need to be aware of. And it's because we obviously have to maintain order in this courtroom. And that's for the benefit of all the participants. And it's very simply, you're just not to be disruptive. No comments and anything like that. If you become disruptive, then I'll obviously need to remove the disruptive individual or individuals. If it becomes systemic, then I may have to consider closing the hearing. So I don't anticipate any problem. We often have some relatively high profile cases and we have the courtroom filled from time to time and it's generally not a problem. As long as people just sit back, take it all in and listen. Everyone, excuse me, everybody is entitled to take any notes or anything like that if you want to. But the local rules do prohibit any audio or video recordings. And it's really interesting, at the bottom of every page we got a footer. It says the United States District Court. And I'm just going to have to read around that, but I don't remember seeing this in the other transcripts. So there's no one's allowed to record anything audio, audibly, or by video. No cameras are allowed, and if you do that, you will be subject to not only being removed, but possibly sanctioned or charged for violating the rules. Does anybody have any audio or video equipment on them at this time, whether it's being used or not? Does anyone have any electronic devices? And then Mr. Lloyd speaks up. Your Honor, I have my telephone, which I... Judge Shirley cuts him off. You know the rules, Mr. Lloyd. Yes, Your Honor. Your continued attendance in this court insists that you follow them, and I've never known you not to. So, all right. Nobody has indicated that they have that, so I will presume everybody understands it. Anybody have any questions about the kind of ground rules? All right, now let's begin. I think we should take up the issue of the representation of Miss Tucci Giraffe. And do I understand that she wants to retain you, that she wants you to be appointed, or that she wants to represent herself? Mr. Lloyd says, Your Honor, I have informed, and C. Clifford Shirley Jr. cuts him off. Can you speak? Come on up and speak into the microphone here. We have a court reporter, and I want to be sure she gets everything down properly. Ah, thank you, Your Honor. And then looks like the judge responds to the thank you by saying, uh-huh. Mr. Lloyd continues, I have explained to the defendant that in my view of the ethical obligations of someone called to a case under the Criminal Justice Act, I cannot accept being retained. I think that, and then Judge Shirley cuts him off. I don't think that's true. Mr. Lloyd says, well, I would. I'm concerned, Your Honor, that it violates the spirit of the act, if not the letter of it. The defendant would like to apply for a pointed elbow or standby counsel, and I'll, I would ask the court to hear Miss Tucci Giraffe on that subject. <clears throat> Judge Shirley responds, all right, she wishes to represent herself. <clears throat> and then Heather speaks up. Actually, if I might address that, Your Honor, <clears throat> Judge Shirley says, just one second. Is that your understanding that she wishes to represent herself? asking the question to Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd replies, my understanding is that she wishes to have to have me appointed under the Criminal Justice Act, but as the attorney, excuse me, as the attorney to consult with her in presenting her desired defense. Judge Shirley says, well, you understand how that works. That means she represents herself and you are available to assist her with more administrative or ministerial type acts, like assist her with filing or things of that nature. Provide her, if she wants, copies of cases or things like that. If she can't get them, but 
And Mr. Lloyd says, and that. And then Judge Shirley continues, she's, she is representing herself. You do not speak for her. You will not represent her in court, but you can sit beside her and assist her. Mr. Lloyd replies, as was done in one of the, Judge Shirley cuts him off. We've done it a half a dozen times or more. Mr. Lloyd says, yes, sir. Judge Shirley says, in the last few years. Mr. Lloyd says, one out of Oak Ridge was, Judge Shirley cuts him off again, right. Mr. Lloyd continues, one of my colleagues served in that capacity. Judge Shirley says, correct. Mr. Lloyd says, but I would ask the court to hear the defendant so as to, there's a clear understanding of her desire. Judge Shirley says, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because obviously I have to go through a litany with her to ensure that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Yes, Your Honor. Very interesting statement right here. What do we got? Lines 20, 21, and 22. All Mr. Lloyd is saying is, Your Honor, I would just want you to hear this from her. I would ask that the court hear the defendant so as to, there's a clear understanding of her desire. And instead of just saying, yeah, I plan to do that, he, he really pours it on here. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because obviously I have to go through a litany with her to ensure that. Wow. I mean, with all the times that Judge Shirley is cutting off Mr. Lloyd already, just in, in these opening pages here, I, it sounds like Judge Shirley is impatient or hmm, has a very... A very short fuse right now I'm not I'm not quite sure I don't want to read too much into it but it seems like he's being difficult already to me so miss Tucci giraffe is that correct excuse me <laughs> so miss Tucci giraffe is it correct that you would like to represent yourself number one and number two would you like for me to also appoint Mr. Lloyd to act as what we call elbow counsel or standby counsel? And Heather says, do you want me to answer from here or from the podium? Which I guess is where Mr. Lloyd has been speaking into that microphone. And Judge Shirley says, I think from there, if you'll just pull the microphone up, I think we can hear you fine. Mr. Lloyd just wasn't speaking up loud enough and didn't have his own microphone. Go ahead. Heather says, okay, I am, I'm here as myself. Judge says, I didn't ask that question. Heather says, no, I know. You're asking if, I, if I'm representing myself. And the judge says, we're all here as ourself. Heather says, I'm not representing myself. I'm here as myself. I am myself, and I will. And judge cuts her off, says, I think I'm myself too. Heather says, correct, I am. Judge says, all right. Heather continues, and this is without prejudice to the matter for jurisdiction, which we haven't gone over yet. Judge Shirley says, correct. I'm going to allow you to file any motions you want on jurisdiction and will, I've got a good organization here. So I think if you stick with me and just let us do this, if there's anything I miss at the end, and then Heather cuts him off, says, no, that's fine. Interesting here. So I think if you stick with me and just let us do this, yeah, this statement here makes me wonder if C. Clifford Shirley Jr. is threatened by Heather Antucci Giraffe in the courtroom. He's really trying to establish control really quickly, but 
he's not doing it very gracefully. He's cut Mr. Lloyd off, what, half a dozen times already, and, and now we've got this interesting statement. Well, we had this comment about, oh, I'm going to do that, obviously. I have to go through a litany with her to ensure that. That doesn't sound like, like he's really happy to be there. And now he's saying, I think if you just stick with me and just let us do this, if there's anything I miss at the end, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not a judge. <laughs> I don't run a federal court. Well, I guess there's some questions about whether or not judges actually run federal courts or whether it's the clerk. Judge says, you can go on about that. I'm, your answer was, if I'm going to represent myself. Judge says, yeah. <clears throat> to represent myself pro se is completely different legal status than pro per or propria persona, as well as just, and then Judge Shirley cuts her off. No, it's not. You're wrong. It's just not the law. You either represent yourself or you don't. <clears throat> so already here on page nine, guys, between line six all the way down through line 10, Heather and the judge are arguing about the meanings and definitions of legal terms. And there's already a disagreement. So Heather continues, without prejudice, I am myself and I am going to be presenting before this court and on behalf of my case. Judge says, do you want to represent yourself? Heather says, yes. Judge says, okay, and the sixth and then Heather cuts him off, without prejudice, yes. Judge says, all right, Sixth Amendment provides that a criminal defendant has the right to assistance of counsel, but it also provides that you can proceed without counsel, which you're offering to do in this case. If the court finds that you have voluntarily and intelligently elected to do so. Okay, in other words, you have... You have a right to counsel, and you have a right to waive counsel. You have your choice, either one. Heather says, right. And this is why I wanted to handle jurisdiction first, because depending on the jurisdiction where we are operating on two different jurisdictions here. So I am going to, without prejudice, going to state that I will be presenting, and I am myself. I'll be presenting all cases. I do not want counsel. Judge Shirley says, okay. Heather continues, but I do would like Mr. Lloyd to act as elbow counsel or what we call in the West Coast standby counsel. Judge says, okay, yeah, either one. We use them. Heather says interchangeably. The judge finishes his sentence interchangeably here. Heather says, okay. So the judge continues, all right. So I have to determine that your decision to represent yourself and to waive counsel is being made knowingly and is being made voluntarily and that you understand what we refer to as all the dangers and disadvantages that that provides. So let me start with a few questions. Have you ever studied law? Heather says, I have. All right, and in what capacity? Heather says, I have a Juris Doctorate. Beautiful, that's a JD. That's a law degree, guys, right here. Heather is telling the judge, I've got a law degree. The judge says, all right, and have you practiced law? I did practice. I've been a lawyer for 17 years, and I was a barred attorney for 11. Okay. Bard has two terms. I guess he means definitions. One is to be a member of the bar and the other is to be barred from being a member of the bar. 
Heather says, I was, she's like a member of the bar. All right. Are you still practicing? No, sir. Okay. I canceled that license in on March 24th, 2011. All right. Have you ever represented yourself as a defendant in a criminal action? I did in Washington State regarding a, when I was doing the mortgage fraud investigations, there was a, an incident with the sheriffs that I was advising and consulting on the mortgage, judge cuts her off. I don't need all the details. True, but it was an obstruction. And so it was a criminal case that was unforeseen. And I did proceed to as myself presenting myself. All right. So you were charged in the state of Washington, right? With something question mark. It was, I don't need the, I don't need the details. Heather says it's on NCIC, but it was obstruction, but it was a deferred prosecution. All right. And I'm going to, Heather cuts him off. It was a misdemeanor in district court. Judge says, I'm going to pause here just for a second. I need to remind you of something probably Judge Guyton told you, which is, you have certain rights as a defendant, and one of those is the right to remain silent and not say anything that might incriminate you. So I'm going to ask you questions very specific that in my mind don't incriminate you, but I don't want to go, I don't want you to go on and on talking about other things that might incriminate you because I don't want you to hurt your case, okay? Heather says, I'm aware. Cynthia Davidson jumps up. Your Honor, I, Miss Davidson, I was just wondering, might it be appropriate for the defendant to be sworn in because she has not, as of yet, been sworn in? And she was answering lots of questions that you're asking of her. Interesting. You know, I think Judge Shirley is off of his game. He's outside of his comfort zone in this courtroom, and he's been asking questions of Heather Ann Tucci, and she's not sworn in yet, and that had to be pointed out by Ms. Davidson. Very interesting. All right, we'll do that. The I need to take up another matter that was sworn, I think, before but there may be some disagreement in light of Mr. Lloyd's filing. So if you would, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, if you'd raise your right hand, please, ma'am. Okay. All right, I think this is a good place to press the pause button on this for right now. We've gotten all the way through the end of page 12. So we will come back and the courtroom deputy is going to swear in Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. I love you guys a lot. This has been a really interesting experience for me, having this channel and making these videos and just watching how quickly my channel is growing. Uh, let me pull up the YouTube page here. Let's go to the dashboard and find out just how many people there are in my kitchen. Oh, 4184. Oh, you guys are in the living room by now. I don't know how all of you fit in here, but your energy has been great. Thank you so much for all of the emails and the comments and the messages. I, I just noticed that YouTube does not send me any notifications when you send me an actual private message through YouTube. So I'm just going to have to remember to check manually. Uh, I saw some in there today that were uh, a few days old, and uh, I was never notified of them. So that was really interesting. So really, the, the most reliable and secure way that I have right now for you to uh, contact me is lunacy at protonmail.com. We'll be back for part two of the detention hearing transcript really soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.